evening, ladies and gentlemen. To a great many people, auto means just one thing, hunting. Well, that's what it meant to me when I headed for a town called Indian Rapids. The night story began early one morning when I was out in the woods trying to bring down my first deer, along with several hundred other hunters. Yards down the valley? Steve? Steve? Sheriff! Sheriff! Where is it, Bill? Steve, he's been shot. What? Steve. No use, Sheriff, he's dead. But you think these sportsmen who call themselves hunters that know the difference between a deer and a hunter? Buck fever. That's when they get when they come up here. They see something move and they blaze away. Got any idea where the shot came from? Oh, they're blazing all over the area. Good morning. Hey, what happened? Some sportsman made a slight mistake. He shot. What? Fine man and a fine deputy. Killed by criminal carelessness. Oh, I don't see why we had to come out here and help the game warden for anyway. We didn't even... Take it easy, Bill. I know he was your best friend, but what's done is... What's your name, mister? Ellery Queen. Take his rifle, Bill. How many shells are you on? Oh, just one, Sheriff. When did you fire it? Well, just now, a minute ago. Where were you standing? I'm back there, about 100 yards. Which direction did you fire? Toward the... Toward the stream. Oh, then he could have been in your line of fire. The fourth fatal accident we've had this year. We're getting sick of you guys coming well, up here. The bullet didn't come from my gun, Sheriff. Couldn't. I had a buck lined up in my sight. Now, did you get him? No, I, I must have been a little anxious. I saw him move on. We're taking you back to town with us. But I tell you, there was nothing in my line of vision. Maybe not. Until we get the bullet out of him and get a ballistic check, you're coming with us. I guess your name just didn't register on us in all that excitement, Mr. Queen. Yeah. You know, my wife read all your books while she was in the hospital. Hospital? Yeah, she had an operation about a month ago. Oh, she's all right now. Oh. Uh, she asked me to bring you home for dinner tonight. Well, I don't think I'd be a very good guest until I find out about this accident. Yeah, sure, I understand. Oh. <laughs> well, look, if you change your mind, will you let me know? Yeah, thanks, Bill. Right, fine. See you later. Hold on. See you later, Sheriff. Sheriff, how much longer are we going to have to wait for that car in his report? I'll check with him. Give me the car in his office. Now, is the car in there? It's Sheriff Shaw speaking. I'll wait. Good evening, Sheriff. What are you doing in my office, Haddon? Well, I stopped in to see why you asked the game warden and turned down my application for hunting licenses here. Because I don't want you in this county. Well, pay my taxes. I'll pay them someplace else. Hello. Say, hey, aren't you the uh, Haddon who owns a couple of nice spots in New York City? I suppose I know you. Oh, probably not, but uh, you might know my father, Inspector Queen, homicide. Oh, so you're his son. I heard about you killing that guy this morning. Well, you did, huh? What are you doing around here, Haddon? Well, after your old man tried to pin that phony murder rap on me two years, I got myself a hunting lot. <laughs> Great life. Nothing to do but hunt, fish, gamble. <laughs> I wouldn't think of it, Mr. Queen. You know, this shooting ought to be a great help to your career. Famous crime writer kills to get authentic touch. That's very funny, Haddon. Should help your old man around headquarters, too. 
After all, how many inspectors of homicide have a killer for a son? Let him go, Mr. Queen. Come on, get your hands filthy. I told you last year, Head, and if I ever caught you operating a game... You're me, sir. So help me if I catch you. Well, I haven't killed anybody. <laughs> well, change your mind about that hunting license. I'm not changing my mind. No harm in asking. Hope you sleep well tonight, Mr. Queen. Don't let him throw you. Well, Mr. Queen, the coroner found no bullet in Steve's body. Oh, then it's impossible to prove anything. It was a high-velocity deer rifle. It went right through. I was counting on a ballistics check. Well, we questioned 20 other hunters in this area this morning. So far, we can't prove anything one way or the other. I wonder why Haddon was interested enough to drop in here. And having any trouble with him, Sheriff? Well, he tried to run his floating crap game on us a couple of times. But every time we raided, he was in another state. Well, would it pay him to run a gambling joint in a small town like Indian Rapids? Well, we're close to a couple of big cities. It's a short drive. Yeah. Well, Mr. Queen, as far as this case is con the office is concerned, the case is closed. Why don't you uh, just forget about it and go on home? No, no, I, I can't go back to New York till I find out about this. <laughs> Thank you, Liz, your Uncle Bob. I sure did, honey. Well, thank goodness one of us has a relative who can afford my operation. Ah, uh, the spoon goes on the other side of the knife. Mm, you're getting better again. You know that's all that matters? There's our company. Hmm. Oh, come on in, Mr. Queen. I'm glad I caught you at the sheriff's office. Oh, it's nice your wife to ask. Thanks. We're very proud to have you, Mr. Queen. Uh, this you probably figured out is Claire. How do you do, Mr. William? Will you excuse us if we sit right down? Bill doesn't have very much time for his dinner. Oh, sure, sure. Sit right here. Hey, let me help you. See, I, uh, I'm sure that they didn't find that bullet, Mr. Queen. Yeah, so am I. So I, uh, I'd like to get a hold of Steve's family. Maybe give them a little help if they need it. Well, he didn't have any family, Mr. Queen. I suppose that's why he was so close to us for a while. For a while. Well, up to about six months ago, he practically lived with it. Then he didn't come around very much anymore. Well, he started acting strangely. Uh, you see, Mr. Queen, Steve was a pretty moody guy. He was shot up pretty badly at Guadalcanal. Every once in a while, his arm would start to hurt him. And... Oh, excuse me. Oh. Hello. Who? Oh, Mrs. Clark. Yeah. Well, look, I'm, I'm eating. I have company for dinner. All right, I'll, I'll take a look around. Oh, don't tell me you can't finish your dinner. <laughs> Mrs. Clark is seeing prowlers again. Now, uh, don't let this spoil your dinner, Mr. Queen. I'll be back as soon as I can. We hardly ever get through a meal without at least one interruption. Well, Mrs. Williams, tell me, uh, do you remember exactly when, uh, six months ago, Steve began acting strangely? Well, not to the day or the week. I mean, was it related to any particular incident or something that might have happened? Not that I remember. No, no, wait a minute. Now that I think of it, it, it was just after Steve investigated the trading post. The trading post? It was a little nightclub just outside of town. There were, there were rumors that it was a front for gambling. Oh, was it? Not according to Steve's report. He was a deputy then, and, well, he gave it a clean bill of health. Who, uh, who owned the trading post? Oh, well, Mr. Andrews. Mr. Queen, you're not eating your dinner. I, uh, I'd like to meet Mr. Andrews. Well, you can. He, he was killed last spring in a hunting accident. Well, just like Steve was. <laughs> they never found the bullet that killed him either. Where, uh, where did he come from? Chicago, I think. He never had very much to do with any of us around here. Who runs the trading post now? No one. They never reopened after Mr. Andrews was killed. Well, Mrs. Williams, would you mind if I left right after dinner? I'd like to take a look at the trading post just as soon as I can.
Gambling at the trading post, Mr. Queen. Well, we'll have to tell Bill as soon as he gets in. Well, maybe he already knows about it. Oh, no, he always tells me everything. Have you told the sheriff yet? No, not yet. Mrs. Williams, did your husband ever mention a man named Tim Haddon? Who, oh, the gambler? Hmm. Bill thought he ought to be thrown out of the county. Well, uh, did he ever say anything about meeting him for any reason at all? Meet him? What are you trying to say, Mr. Queen? Well, I want to be absolutely sure before I go to the sheriff. Sure about what? You're holding something back from me, Mr. Queen. Mrs. Williams. You saw I... Bill in that place, didn't you? He was gambling. Look, you have to tell me about it. I have to know. Well, I saw him there. He wasn't gambling. But he was with Haddon, and they seemed pretty friendly. Now, I only tell you this in the hope that we can find some explanation. Well, I don't believe it. Why would Bill get mixed up with a gambler? Well, when a police officer gets mixed up with a... Racketeer, generally, protection money is paid. You're uh, implying that Bill took money. Here's his bank book. You can see every deposit he's ever made, including the money he borrowed from his uncle to pay for the operation. When did he borrow this $3,000? A month ago. You're not thinking that... I'm afraid I am, Mrs. Williams. Well, I'll call his uncle. I've got his uh, Long distance, please. Uh, Albany, New York. Albany 3210. I'm sorry about this. I'll show you. Bill's never lied to me in his life. Uh, hello? Uh, Albany 3210? <laughs> I'd like to speak to Mr. Robert Tucker, please. He... Would you mind repeating that? Oh, I see. What is it? He... He died in California. A year ago. Now, Miss Williams, take it in. Take it. <laughs> if Bill took that money, it's only because I was so sick. I'm sure of it. Please, don't do anything until you hear from Bill. No, I don't intend to. But you've got to promise not to say anything about this because I want a chance to talk to him myself first. And if Bill will help us expose this racket. Promise anything, Mr. Queen. Promise anything. Hadn't actually had the guts to come back and open up another of his games. How's come this cross this place, Mr. Queen? Well, I heard that the owner of the trading post and killed in a hunting accident. Like Steve. That's right. Andrew. You mean you think Steve's death was related to his? Oh, he handled an investigation of the trading post, didn't he? Yeah. Here's his report. You mean you think the place was in operation all the time and Steve was on the payroll? Could be. Now, I've known Steve since he was a kid. Evening, Sheriff. Hi, Mr. Queen. Sorry I couldn't get back for dinner. Mrs. Clark hearing prowlers again. <laughs> What's the matter? Something up? Plenty. Mr. Queen tells me that Haddon's operating again at the trading post this time. Ah, oh, Haddon wouldn't open after all those warnings. Uh, it's not that I doubt your word, Mr. Queen, but just how do you know? Well, I was there myself an hour ago. 
That's information enough for me. Get Hank and Joe Potter and five or six of the other boys. Tell them I'm deputizing them for the night. Right, Sheriff. After we pull Hatton in, it'd be very interesting to find out exactly how he spent this morning. Yeah, that was my thought, too, Sheriff. Incidentally, it's too short-handed. I'll be glad to go along with you. I can always use an extra hand. Sheriff Shaw speaking. Oh, well, didn't Bill show up, Mrs. Clark? That's strange. No, I won't be able to spare another man until morning. Yeah, well, call back if you hear the prowler again. Seems like Bill just breezed right in and out of her house. Oh, I'm uh, swearing in the deputies at 10.30. See you here then. I wouldn't miss it for the world. your message, Haddon. What do you want? My three grand worth of information. What's new around the sheriff's office, Bill? Not a thing. Well, there's rumors around town the boys are being deputized. Why? Well, maybe they're going to try and find Steve's killer. Like I told you once tonight, Bill, don't get nervous just because Steve was in an accident. Yeah, and I told you if I ever found that it wasn't an accident. Well, if it wasn't, who knew better than you? Now, why the deputized? Want me to talk to your wife? Okay, Haddon. They're going to raid your place tonight. Who took them off? That writer, Ellery Queen. I thought so. Bill, hey, you want to wipe off the rest of that three grand debt? The sooner the better. Okay. You get rid of this guy, Queen. Permanently. What are you talking about? Well, a guy like Ellery Queen can't afford to get involved in something like this, so he asks questions. Maybe he won't stop until he has all the answers. You mean you want me to murder? A guy with a badge doesn't have to murder. He can shoot somebody by mistake. Line of duty. What do you think I am? Now, here's how you do it. Queen will be along on that raid tonight. Now, will you get on there before you I... figured out what's going to happen to your wife? If Queen comes up with the answers? How long is she going to enjoy her health when she finds out her husband's a crook? She's not well yet, Bill. How's she going to support herself while you're in jail? You boys got the side windows covered, Hank? How about the back entrance, Bill? Uh, Joe and Frank are taking care of those, Sheriff. Okay, Mr. Queen. Okay. Light switch, Sheriff. Well, a triple up and a getaway. Who could have tipped heading off? Well, you deputized eight men. Your guess is as good as mine. Yeah, not a single piece of equipment for evidence. Well, they couldn't have moved this stuff far on such short notice. Why don't I take a look around here, Sheriff? You see, Haddon, hold on to him. Now, if he's got a rifle and no hunting license, that'd be grounds. I'll take the posse and start looking for him. He might be up at his range. Well, Sheriff, uh, why don't I stay here and help Mr. Queen? Good idea. I'll see you later. Why don't you look around up in that office, Mr. Queen, while I look at you? You, uh, stop your act now, Bill. My act? I don't know what you mean. Yeah, I was here early this evening. I saw you with Haddon. I, uh, hoped that you were through with it. You wouldn't tip us off. I think you'd better let me have your rifle, Mr. Queen. You now you're making me do something I told Haddon I didn't want to do. There's still a chance for you, Bill, if you turn state's evidence. Yeah, well, I'd rather be around to take care of my wife. Don't be a fool. I know why you needed Haddon's money. Yeah, well, you know too much. Well, I know you didn't kill Steve. I know you're not a murderer. Hey, shut up, you hear me? Bill, your wife loves you. She needs you. Killing me is no solution. Bill, I need your help. Now, if you'll cooperate in trying to get Haddon and track down Steve's killer, any jury will be lenient. Oh, I don't know. I won't make it up, Mr. Queen. Listen. It hadn't killed Steve? I, uh, I don't know. Well, 
He had a reason. Oh, was Steve on his payroll? Yeah, until he threatened to go to the sheriff and tell the newspapers. Did Steve take you to Haddon? Yeah, when he found out I needed money for Claire's operation. When did uh, Haddon tell you to take care of me? Well, I was just a couple of hours ago when he found out you were coming on this raid. Oh, I see. So, why don't you help me get the man who killed the thief? I've had a terrible accident. An accident? What happened? I... I killed Mr. Queen. You what? Yeah, well, it was about a half an hour ago. We were hunting around in the bushes outside for gambling equipment. Well, it was dark. I, I thought he was near me. I heard a sound in the distance, and I guess I got nervous. I fired twice. You mean got Queen? Isn't that too bad? Look, I, it was an accident, Sheriff. I swore it was. I'm sure it was. It's manslaughter, just the same. I'll have to hold you, Bill. Well, I guess that takes care of your case against me. No witness. Can I go now? Sheriff Shaw speaking. Who? Oh, hello. Can I give him a message? Mm -hmm. Yes, I'll tell him. That was your wife, Bill. Claire? Well, what what she want, Sheriff? She said something very interesting. No, oh, well, what was that? She wants to know if she's still counting on Mr. Queen over at the house for a late snack. She just saw him go into his hotel not five minutes ago. That's very interesting. Oh, no, she couldn't have seen Mr. Queen. He said, I said, I killed him. What's the gag, Bill? Uh, hey. uh, double cross me, huh? You and Queen had a plan, only your wife just lops it up for you now. Hey, now, wait a minute, wait a minute. What is this, Sheriff? You gonna hold a gun on me while this stud beats me up? That's right. Wait a minute. Hey, you mean that you two have been working together? Let's say he's been working for me. You mean you own those gambling joints? You ordered him to shoot Steve? It's easier to do my own shoot. Andrews, too? Yes, Andrews, too. I offered to buy him out. He turned me down. And Steve. Now you. No, wait a minute, Sheriff. You can't get away with this. How are you going to explain my death? Simple. Your conscience bothered you and you committed suicide. With you gone and no gambling equipment, there's only Mr. Queen's word. They can't convict even Haddon on that. So long, Bill. Oh, Bill. Oh, no, honey, your phone call came just the right time. Now, what is this? Well, we'd always give you a chance to talk, Sheriff. I knew you were involved when Haddon found out I was going along on the raid. Well, you heard it from Bill. Oh, no, he didn't. He couldn't. You and I were here alone. Remember when we made the arrangements? When you got that call from Mrs. Clark? How could we ever thank you, Mr. Queen? Well, let's find out how Bill makes out with the jury first. I'm sure they'll appreciate what he's done. Preceding program, originally telecast by ABC in New York, has come to you by special video recording. This is ABC, the American Broadcasting Company.